dear students i welcome all of you in the another session of traffic engineering and management so uh, for last two sessions we have been discussing about the traffic intersection you have learned that there are various types of traffic intersections and there are various categories and classifications of traffic intersection you have learned that there is unchanneled intersection channeled intersection then there is add grid then grid separated now make uh, clear one thing in your mind that whenever we are designing any of the geometric elements which are related with the traffic engineering and management we need to have proper thorough knowledge that which factors are to be considered see as you are in six semesters and you have been learning this particular civil engineering since last 3 years you might have read the question that is having the title of factors affecting blah 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 now this factors affecting you always take it very lightly you just mug up those things and then you prepare it you write it in an exam and then you forget you tend to forget but my personal experience regarding the field says that this particular element that is called as factors affecting or the suitable criteria or the technical factors or the technical uh, uh, element specifications all these things play an important role it will be okay if you are not aware aware of certain design standards but it will never be okay if you are unaware of the factors that are affecting for the creation or development of any of the transportation related element because basically all these things are very simple to remember simple to understand but they are as important as far as this particular syllabus is concerned so whenever you will go to the site visit you, you may experience that number of times you will not have any kind of instruments available with you with you you will not have any kind of equipments at that time this common sense things this general knowledge kind of things will play an important with the help of these things you will be able to measure certain elements you will be able to take certain decisions which will ultimately play an important role for the development of the particular proposed facility that you are targeting so basically what i am trying to uh, say by spending this one or two minutes is that whenever you hear the particular term factors affecting city suitable criteria suitable factors eliminating factors always play an all important role always play attentive always be attentive because these things play an important role sorry that there was a fumbling from my side so let us uh, begin the session this is the session in which we are discussing we are continuing the particular module of design of intersection in this session what we are going to cover is we are going to cover certain factors or certain technical criteria for intersection designing so before learning that there is one thing that has been left from our side that is visibility at intersection let us understand this thing first that proper visibility see intersection is like this or it is visibility plays an important role because when the driver is approaching from this side he must be able to see that whether any kind of vehicle or any kind of obstruction is entering from this particular path or not so proper visibility should be provided that a driver approaching the intersection on the either side of highway must be able to perceive a hazard and halt the vehicle because holding the vehicle halting the vehicle leads towards the reduction of accidents okay and for that we need to have the proper knowledge of stopping side distance that is called as sst you have already learned the detailed description of sst and various kind of side distances such as overtaking side distance side distance at the sector intersection stopping side distance at uh, in the semester fifth in the section of highway geometry design of transportation so the same equation applies over here the stopping side distance you know that it is the summation of two thing lag distance and braking distance the equation for lag distance is small v into t and braking distance is v square by 2 g f so this is the equation of stopping side distance where the v stands for speed of vehicle in meter per second here meter per meter per second is taken that so that it will be small v if it is in kmph it will be capital v so consider this at the as the small v 
Then the T is called as the reaction time that is 2.5 seconds that implies from PIEV theory. You have already learned this PIEV theory in the transportation engineering also and in the particular subject also in the beginning. And the F stands for coefficient of friction that is from 0 0.4 to 0 0.35. So this is about stopping set distance that needs to be provided whenever it is about intersection designing thing. See, there are certain IRC criteria that if the design speed is of 20 kmph, the safe stopping set distance in meters should be 20. If it is 25, it would be 25. If it is 30, it would be 30. If speed is 40, the distance would be 45. See, as soon as the speed is increasing, you can see that the safe SSD is also increasing. For the speed of 60, the SSD is 80. For the speed of 100, the SSD is 180. So this is how it works, the design speed and safe SSD. So this is about the visibility at intersection that it plays an important role. Now let us discuss about the width of carriageway at the intersection. See, this is about the particular intersection. If any of the vehicle wants to get turned from here to here, this section needs to be widened. And this is called as width of carriageway. So width of the carriageway must be improved, must be increased when it is about the curvature of road. Because there the phenomenon such as mechanical widening and psychological widening will play an important role. So you have already learned the mechanical widening that is this mechanical widening is equal to, uh, sorry, extra widening is equal to mechanical widening plus psychological widening. So you have learned this thing in the transportation engineering. You just have to apply the criteria over here that it is a summation of mechanical widening and psychological widening. The equation for this is NL square by 2R plus V by 9.5 under the graph. That stands for extra widening. So this is about the width of carriage, where the N, this N stands for number of lanes, L stands for length of wheelways in meters and R stands for mean radius of car. The pavement width or the carriageway width are to be provided with the consideration of IRC SP41. See, whenever I write any of the name of the code, you must have to remember that this is the code. You don't have to remember the detailed code considerations. You just have to remember the title of the code that, okay, the number of code is IRC SP41. If the inner radius is 10, radius is 10.5 and if the design speed is 18, then the if in such case, the single lane width would be 5.5 meter and two lane width would be 11.5. If 15 meter inner radius is there, then it would be 23 speed. Then single lane would be 5.5 two lane would be 10.5. If inner radius, radius is 20 meters and speed is 27, design speed means 98 km speed. Then the single lane width would be 5 meter and two lane width would be 10. And this is how it goes on. So these are the values and these values you have to remember. I repeat it once again that you have to remember these values. Then comes the median opening. See, usually this is the road. This is the central line, this is the central line, vehicles are going in this direction, vehicles are going in this direction and this is the road, see. Usually people call this as the divider, but in technical language this is called as median and the gap between this median is called as median gap. Why am I uh, repeating this? Because you need to have proper technical terminology, conceptual understanding that this is called as median and not as divider as a technical engineer. So there are certain intersections where the volume of traffic is very low or it is below the capacity. In such cases, vehicles would take the minimum turning path and they will try to change their path from this to this or this to this. If someone is going from here and he wants to take the U-turn, then he will use this space and it will go from here to here. So where the traffic volume is below the capacity, in such cases, people may use the median. This is called as median. In such purposes, a simple median opening design for the minimum turning path will 
play an important role. This shape is called as bullet median opening. See, the shape of is like a bullet. Okay, so this is called as bullet median opening. It may be designed and it will depend upon the width of the median. You have to refer the ASTO standards to remember the minimum length of the median. That is given in the book actually. There is no need to write over here. So this is called as minimum length of median open. Then there is a type of intersection that is, that is called as T intersection. See, you can see that this is the shape of T. This is the shape of T. So here no kind of traffic control devices are provided. So it is called as unchannelized T intersections. It is only provided where very light, very light traffic is there or very local or minor kind of category of road is there. Sometimes flaring is also provided to facilitate the right side movement. So this is called as flaring. Here, one kind of island is provided. Sometimes islands are also provided. So this is about T intersection. Let us discuss in detail about this thing once again that this is one of the other thing that is called as Y intersection. See, this is not T, this is Y. So, 1, 2, like this. Sometimes it is also considered as T but usually this is considered as Y. So, this is Y intersection. The mostly design features are similar to T. That is why sometimes it is called as T alternative intersection or T intersection. But one thing is different that the intersection angle is very acute. See, this is the intersection angle. This is the intersection. This is the intersection. It is very acute. Sometimes islands are provided. See, this is the provision of island. You can see. Sometimes islands are not provided like this. Here the islands are not provided. So this is Y intersection. Then comes the crossroad and staggered. This is called as crossroad. And this is called as staggered. Like this, like this. Stag in staggered, it will be like this. In crossroad, it will be like this or like this or like this. So this is about crossroads and staggered intersection. Then comes the rotary intersection. You have already learned about the basics of rotary intersection that it acts like this Darpan circle and then comes the Navarantura circle are the example of that. It looks like this. Rotary intersection of the road is also called as traffic rotary. You can also call it as traffic rotary, which is nothing but the enlarged intersection of road where the vehicle crosses roads or change their direction with respect to without stopping. They will not stop. They will just move from this to this or this to this, like this. All vehicles coming from the different road move in the single direction around the central island that has already been denoted in the figure and diverges to the required exit. These are the various shapes of the intersection. It can be circular, it can be elliptical, it can be turbine, it can be the shape of tangent. So it is about that. These are certain advantages of rotary intersection that traffic flow is regulated to only one direction moment that eliminates the severe conflict. All the vehicles entering the rotary are gently forced and the speed is reduced. Due to the lower speed, the conflict would be reduced and accidents would be reduced. Road, there is no need to provide any kind of police or traffic signal because rotaries are self-governing. People can understand that, okay, you have to move from this to this stretch. And these are ideally suited for moderate traffic. They are especially with the irregular geometry and intersection with more than three or four approaches. And disadvantage is also that due to low traffic, vehicles reduce their speed there is there are chances of delay due to lowering of speed there are chances uh, not chances it is fixed that it is requiring higher cost in the urban area for the construction and it is not suitable where the high pedestrian movement is there because people will not stop their vehicle as i, we have, I have already stated and pedestrian will experience issues so this is about this session, in next session, we will discuss about various kind of guidelines for selecting of rotary intersections. Thank you so much, friends.